Shalom Aleichem, everybody, in Parshat Mishpatim, one of the many mitzvot that we learn about is the mitzvot and the halachot regarding how to treat an Eved Kena'ani. And the Rambam tells us in Perek Tet, Afilchot Melachim, that these halachot are powerful. They are really an or lagoyim. The Torah teaches us how to treat slaves. We have to treat them with respect. We can't give them too much work. We have to give them proper food, proper drink. Um, proper places to sleep. <clears throat> it's an incredible, incredible set of halachot. I would have thought that you can treat, treat a slave like an animal, God forbid, like a piece of furniture, God forbid. And the Torah says, absolutely not. The Torah tells us in Perik Chaf Aleph, Psukim Chaf Vav and Chaf Zayin, that if a master injures their slave by causing them to lose an eye or to lose a tooth, the slave goes free. And not only that, but Rashi there quotes the Gemara and Masechet Kiddushin, that's not just an eye or a tooth, but 24 parts of the body, a finger, a toe, anything that, it, that, it, that a master injures um, their slave, the slave goes free. And we have to ask why. Of course, this is a terrible thing. Of course, it's terrible to injure a slave. But why does an injured slave particularly go free? Maybe pay them, something like that. But why do they specifically go free? This question is asked by Rav Yitzchak Yaakov Reines. Rav Reines died in the year 1915, a tremendous Talmud Chacham from Eastern Europe, one of the early religious Zionist Rabbanim. He actually is the founder of the Mizrahi religious Zionist movement. And Rav Reines asks these questions and he says the following most beautiful idea. He says that the very concept of a person enslaving another person comes from Parshat Noach, all the way in the beginning of Sefer Breshit. When, when, Noach, when, when Noach became drunk and his son Knaan did what he did, the most corrupt, perverted thing that one can do, Noah wakes up, realizes what Canaan did, and he curses Canaan. And he says that you, Canaan, are going to be a servant. Your children and your children's children are going to be servants to your brothers. Canaan's actions were so depraved that his descendants had to become slaves so that they can learn how to treat one slave properly. They would see how to treat people properly, especially people who are weaker than them, people, people who are in a disadvantaged position. Your, his descendants, Canaan's descendants, must be put in the same dis- situation, but this time, instead of being treated poorly, they will be treated properly. That is what is supposed to happen. However, says Rav Reines, the Torah in Parshat Mishpatim describes a master who does not act like that, who does not treat the slave properly. In this situation, in this kind of household, the slave isn't learning anything at all. The whole point of slavery is nullified. It's not working. It's no longer in effect. The slave is not learning anything other than the opposite of what the Torah wants him to learn. So in that case, the slave goes free. We are supposed to be a nation that is an or lagoyim. We are supposed to be creating a land, a nation, a state that is an or lagoyim. And if we can't do that, God forbid, we lose the very privileges that we were, that are given to us to teach the world how special Hashem is and how special the Torah is. May we, Emir Tzashem, be Zoha today, in this year, on this day, Bezrat Hashem, in this wonderful, wonderful state of Eretz Yisrael, Medina Yisrael, may we be Zoha to act properly, treat others properly, especially people who are more disadvantaged than us. And if we do that, and when we do that, may Hashem continue to shower His blessings upon all of the people of Israel. Have a Shabbat Shalom, everyone.